everybody, Sarah here with the Big Blue House Homestead, and we're going to go out and harvest some tomatoes today. Hi. I've been picking some off the little plants over here and eating them because they're really good. These are actually the Matt's Wild Cherry, which is a wild variety, and they're actually like really sweet and yummy. I really like those. I've got to go through the container gardens up here. Just a few cherry tomatoes here and there that are right. My tomato plants are struggling. Um, I don't have any rain. I think we've, we've been recorded to have like eight inches since April. And I'm trying to keep up with as much watering by hand that I can. And it's hard. It's really rough. I really wish that we would just get nice rainstorms. But we get gray clouds. And they kind of hover. And then they go away. So it is what it is. It's a struggle. It's hot. It's 91 degrees. No rain in sight. And I'm just trying to do my best to keep the garden going. I do have plants that are nasty looking. Um, they're shriveling up and turning brown because they're not watered enough or they're getting leaf curl because they're underwatered, or they've got disease setting in because between everything that I'm doing, I can't keep up with the plants themselves. So we're gonna walk around and I wanna talk about some of the tomato varieties that I have going on because I do have quite a bit. I'm not gonna go through every variety, but as we harvest, I wanna talk about what it is that I'm growing. I haven't really spoken about my tomato plants in general, just kind of some things here and there, but I have over 50 varieties growing this year. And I told myself, and I promised myself, and I swear, I am not going to do this again next year. This was the final year that I was going to test every type of tomato that I wanted to try. And next year, I'm only planting the ones that I liked. I'm not going to waste my time with all the others. It takes up too much space in my garden. So anyway, we're going to head down and we're going to get some tomatoes picked. Like I said, i got to grab a couple that are up here, and then I'll show you what my plants look like. In a drought, in the middle of the summer, in scorching South Carolina weather. It's okay. I still have tomatoes. So let's head down there and see what's going on. I like to keep my cherry tomatoes separate from my large tomatoes and my paste tomatoes, and I'll show you why in a minute. But I just want to point out, these are uh, Super Snow Whites, and that's just a Chadwick cherry. That is a large red cherry, and these little teeny baby ones are Tess's Land Current tomatoes. So I got a handful just off the containers up front. All right, most of these that are just with the cages surrounding them, those are actually just extra tomato plants, so I have no clue what variety they are. I just threw in a lot of stuff. The ones over here we're looking at, they look really sad. See how, like, bad they look? I really need to get out and water. But these I actually labeled. Um, so I kind of sort of know what they are. So the first ones, I'm walking on the back side. It makes it easier for me. But the first ones are supposed to be black tomatoes or dark purple. And then it comes over to some Paul Robeson's and some Bonnie's Best, which I have one here. Blossom and Rot. This variety has done nothing. but giving me blossom end rot on all these tomatoes. And I don't want to grow those again until I can fix the soil, but that's the Bonnie's best. When you move down even further, I've got triple L crops and I have some German Johnson's and some Heinz tomatoes, which these are looking okay. They're not quite ready yet. We'll see. Okay, I mentioned I like to keep my cherry tomatoes separate. And the reason being, can you see all these ripe tomatoes <laughs> everywhere? These are Principe Borghese. And I want to talk about those for a minute because I really don't recommend them. All right, I'm sitting down here with the plants and that's fine. There are a lot of tomatoes to pick and I will come back and do these last because they take me forever. That's the Principe Borghese. And that's just a regular cherry tomato. These are supposed to be a paste tomato. They were advertised as a paste tomato. They are a paste tomato, but that's a tiny tomato to deal with. And unfortunately, a lot of my picking and canning has been with these tomatoes. I have a lot. I'm getting like 10 and 12 pounds at a time. Lots of tomatoes. But they take forever to peel, and they're a pain in the butt when it comes to canning. So unless you're going to can like just whole tomatoes, just throw these all in straight. Um, yeah, they're a lot of work, a lot of work, and I'd rather grow other varieties. I'll show you the paste tomatoes that I'm enjoying this year because I'm going to grow more. 
and they are a lot better than these even though they're very very prolific like I said there's probably a hundred ripe tomatoes here already and I've picked hundreds but they're just too small so Prinzibi Borghese I probably will never grow those again now I'm enjoying these San Marzanos uh, these are a really decent sized tomato there's a lot here <laughs> I've got a lot to pick but let me show you how big they actually are yeah, these definitely are decent size. Um, I've had some that are a little bit bigger. I think if I had more rain, they would be larger tomatoes. But these I can handle. Very meaty, very good tomatoes. All right, these tomatoes. Woo! These are the Reverend Morrow's Long Keeper tomatoes. And I tried to tie them up, but they are so full of fruit, I can't. So I have to let them just stay on the ground. When we come down the row, got quite a bit in here. Purple Cherokees, I see one. You can kind of see it in there that's ripe down to some Amish paste so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these real quick all three of these varieties I like I really really enjoy Amish paste seems to have a lot of disease though and I've always had that issue here I'm not sure if it's just because of my weather temperament <sighs> I have better varieties in the garden that I would prefer to probably grow over those so let's pick these tomatoes real quick and see how many we're actually gonna get okay I had to take a break because it is so hot here um, unbelievably scorching hot I do not know why I didn't decide to move to like Alaska I just start there because I would rather be in the cold right now than this heat but I gotta do what I gotta do lots of great things going on over here I went ahead and took my baskets in and dumped them because I had so many tomatoes in there already but we're gonna talk about cherry tomatoes and then the rest of these heirlooms I don't have a whole lot of variety over here just some but I have struggles, lots of struggles, especially with my cherry tomatoes. And I do want to talk about that because I think it's important that people see it's not perfect every time that I walk out to my garden. I do have problems, and that's absolutely fine. I have the same problems everybody else does. So let's go look at some of these cherry tomatoes real quick. There are a lot of tomatoes, a lot of ripe tomatoes, and a lot of eh, yucky-looking issues. All right, this is the Grand Cherry Tomato Row. Quite a few varieties here um this year i grew chocolate cherries which i love they're great tasty tomatoes but i also grew the black cherries to figure out which ones i liked better and last year i grew both of them and still couldn't decide this year i know i'm going with the black cherries chocolate cherries look great but look at the size of the plant compared to these over here this is the black cherry it is a massive plant no diseases, no issues. It's loaded down with tomatoes, and I absolutely love it. What I will not grow again as of cherry tomatoes are yellow pears. There are a lot of people that swear by these, but can you see how bad these plants look? Because I've had no rain, they're just dried up and shriveling. Now, they're loaded with cherry tomatoes, but it's not a variety I like very well. I'm also not a big fan of these gooseberries, Hartman's what is it Hartman's gooseberry they're okay very acidic though I don't care for them that much Chadwick cherries has always been one of my favorite very nice sized cherry tomatoes I get lots of those and then I grew the sweetie variety went on the other side so you don't have to see my shadow but these sweeties um yeah there's some weird shaped tomatoes in here and they're not all the same like some of them look like Roma style, while others are very round. And you can see it's the same plant. See the shape of these? And then you can see the round ones right there. So I don't know if it's because it's a hybrid or what, but yeah, I probably won't grow those again. All right, and this is the heirloom wall. You can see quite a bit of tomatoes down here. I have some that are so heavy I can't even <laughs> get them to stay tied up. But on the end, I have the garden peach, which I enjoy these. They're not a favorite. They are very fuzzy skinned. So that's a little, little unusual, but they taste pretty good. I like those a lot. Okay, so I've got the garden peach and then I've got Dr. Wykes, which are decent, really good tomatoes. And then I have the mortgage lifters, which I absolutely love. I mean, these are massive tomatoes. I'll show you one once I pick one. And then I put in some hillbillies and look how struggling those are. I just don't think I can grow the hillbillies here again. Um, they gave off nice fruit, but I only have one plant that actually has big tomatoes where the others are very small, and that one on the end is basically dead. Can't do anything with that. 
So I wanted to talk to you guys about my tomatoes today. I have another couple varieties here and there. I've got some Armana orange over here in the corner, a Cherokee green, and some Romas that I put in just because, you know, you can always have more paste tomatoes. And they're a good variety. But a lot of these I probably will not grow again. Um, I'll stick with my favorites. And what I'll do is I'll compile a video and talk about which ones I'm actually going to be growing 100%. Um, I need to taste test just a few more of these. And then I've got a few up front I want to taste test first. But so far, when it comes down to what I'm planting in my garden next year, any of the Cherokee variety is a number one for me. I really like the San Marzanos as a, you know, paste tomato. Those are really good. I'll stick with the chocolate cherries, the Chadwick cherries, um, and the Matt's Wild Cherry. I like the flavor on that one a lot. And then when it comes to doing more heirlooms, they just aren't doing well for me. It's a struggle here in the south. So uh, we'll figure it out as it goes on. And I am looking at so much wilt. Let me show you. See, I just don't have enough rain. And all of these poor plants just look absolutely horrible. So I'm not going to come out and water now. It's too hot. I'm going to wait till this evening. And I'm definitely going to set in good sprinklers and get things going. Because I don't want my beans to dry up since I'm finally getting beans. Don't mind the squash. They always look very, very wilty. And I've got some giant squash because I stopped picking them. I'm just, I'm done. But my peppers, I don't want those to struggle because I'm loaded down with peppers. Yeah, see those are a, I think, Ash County Pimento. And it is just full, full, full of peppers. I'm going to finish picking real quick before I get too overheated again. And then I'm going to go run inside and show you guys how many tomatoes I got today. This is an average day for me. <laughs> Not a, you know, prolific. It's an average day. And you'll be surprised how many tomatoes I get. So let me run through and get this done. Go cool off in a fan. Wipe some more sweat from my brow. And just keep on pushing through today. Because I still have to come out and water. And yeah, I still have other harvests to do too. Cucumbers, okra, squash. I don't want any more squash. Um, and I got a couple ripe peppers finally. So yeah, let me pick the tomatoes and I'll show you the end. All right, and that's the tomato haul for the day. Got the Prince of B. Borghese all back here. See how many that is? That's a lot of work for canning. I really don't want to grow those ever again. They're good tomatoes though. If you like them, I hope you really enjoy them. It's too much work for me. Went ahead and picked some of these Reverend Morrows because I'm going to water. I don't want them to split. And that's all my cherry tomato varieties. Amish pastes and Cherokee purples, which split and have blossom and rot. So I'm going to see if I can salvage any of this tomato and make a fresh salsa for dinner tonight. If not, I'll just throw them to the chickens. Got the San Marzanos, Garden Peach, a couple mortgage lifters, some Romas, and this one is a vintage wine. Look how cool that looks. It's a really interesting tomato. Haven't tasted one yet, so we'll see what that's like, but look at these. I mean, that's a good tomato. I'm telling you, it is hot. So hot. It is unbelievably hot. And I apologize, I keep wiping sweat, but I'm showing you the reality here. It's what it's like when you're gardening in the summer and the heat. Anyways, that's a lot of tomatoes. I am happy with the haul that I've gotten, but unfortunately, I'm disappointed in some of the varieties. Again, I will never grow those Prince B. Borghese, just for what they are. And those Amish paste are always a struggle for me. And then yellow pears. I'm just, no. No matter where I grew them, they did that. I did them in containers and out in the back, and they just struggle for me in my area. So it's not a good tomato for my, my climate. South Carolina Zone 7B. Yeah, we got finicky tomatoes, I guess. So anyways, I'm going to go cool off. I just want to share this with you. It's just one day of picking. I have an entire kitchen to clean tonight, and I still have to cook dinner in a little bit. So I'm going to cool off and get myself ready for the rest of the night. Thank you guys for stopping by. And, yeah, let me know what tomatoes you grow in your area, especially if you're local, because I'd love to know what works out great for you guys. I've had some struggles this year, and next year I want it to be no more struggling. So tomato varieties, put them in the comments, please. I'd love to know what it is that you grow. All right, I'm going to go. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.